So we're going to take a look this morning at the side of God that he is our strength and our refuge and ever-present help in time of trouble. We are facing a a world today where there's lots of trouble going on, isn't there? And there's lots of people that are having to deal with that. And so we want to read from Psalm 115 this morning. Psalm 115, starting at verse 1. And going to verse 11. And it says this. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Why let the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens, and he does as he wishes. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold, shaped by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, and noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, and feet but cannot walk, and throats but cannot make a sound. And those who make idols are just like them, as are all who trust in them. O Israel, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. O priest, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. All who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. Trust the Lord. Why? Because he is your helper and your shield. I want to share with you a little bit of a testimony here. Um, It's it's a testimony told of a woman in her late 20s who was very involved in church ministry, had a husband and two children, by all accounts seemed happy to everyone in her social circles. She began to experience another part of life, though, that was not so happy behind closed doors. Even though she knew a lot of people, she felt lonely. She didn't have joy anymore. The issues of life became larger than life itself, and it seemed there was no way out of them. She would get up in the morning with no energy for her children, remain in her pajamas all day, having little ambition to care for them. The house would be left a mess out of the lethargic state in which she lived. In order to maintain appearances, she would quickly get dressed before her husband got home from work so it would appear like, you know, everything was normal, but he could see that the needs of the day had not been met well. Fear began to manifest itself. Her husband worked shift work, and so he was not always there in the evening and bedtime. And afraid to be alone at night, she would go to bed with all the lights on. Yet... That brought little comfort when the terror of imagination started hearing noises of people breaking into the basement windows. Coming home from the wake of a friend who had passed, a demonic presence brought the horror of death to her bedside. Not realizing what was happening to her over these past several months, she began to believe that she was dying. Visions of her children growing up without a mother and writing her will out, began to play heavy on her mind. The mental anxiety in her was deeply rooted and dark. After a year of this, she decided it was time to see a doctor and get the diagnosis that she had been afraid to hear. However, the diagnosis was not what she was expecting, but it was manageable if it was handled correctly. The diagnosis was depression. And that woman was me. And while there's more to that story, I share that because it's a very practical, tangible thing that we see in our world today. 
that people are filled with anxiety, depression, thoughts of suicide, turning to drugs and alcohol. Many are losing their job. Finances and putting food on the table are huge issues for many. And people are just tired. People are tired of all the uncertainty that the world is holding. And people are fearful on many levels and for many different reasons. And if we were honest, you know, we would say that many of the people that experience these things are Christians. The world is in turmoil, and yet the ones who have the answers in their hand, they have the answer in their hand, and the answer printed on their hearts are not able to help because they have not applied it to their own life. But I want to give you some truth about why we can place all our trust and confidence in God. If we were to reread those last verses that we read in Psalm 115, and we see some of them in red, we, it might say something like this. Christian, trust the Lord. Why? Because he is your helper and your shield. My son, my daughter, trust the Lord. Why? Because he is your helper and your shield. Put your name in there. Peter, Linda, Donna, Terry, Jim, put your name in there. Trust the Lord. Why? Because he is your helper and your shield. Four things. First, he is the God who sees me. Remember the story of Hagar, Genesis 16? She was the maidservant of a lady named Sarai. Sarai and her husband Abram. Later they became known as Sarah and Abraham. But Sarai couldn't have children, and back then that was a huge deal. That was a shameful thing when women could not bear children. And so... She said to her husband, Abram, one day, she said, take Hagar as your wife so that maybe she can have children for me. You remember that story? And so Hagar becomes pregnant. And she starts to flaunt it a little bit. And relationships started getting strained. You know how it is in families. Relationships start getting strained, and extended relationships get even more complicated. And so Sarai starts to abuse Hagar and treat her really badly. It was her idea, and yet she ends up abusing Hagar. And so what does Hagar do? She runs away, and she's found by the Lord crying beside a river. Many times we just want to run and hide, don't we? Things are said, things are done, pressures are put on us. We get so busy and wrapped up in stuff, we just want to run away, hide from the world, hide from those who accuse us of things. But God showed himself to Hagar in her state of rejection and abuse. He comforted Hagar. And he will comfort us as well. He knows your need. 2 Corinthians 1.3 All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. It doesn't matter what our situation is. It doesn't matter where we are or who's involved. We may be having situations that are involving people that maybe aren't believers, and it can be more challenging, but God knows how to get and, and fix those situations. He can turn situations around. Everyone goes through moments where we just need to know that we are not alone. You are not alone. You might live alone, but you are not alone. We have a faithful God of all comfort. 
And so I want to reassure you of that this morning because there are so many people in our world who need to know that. That they are not alone. And they can put their trust in God who is faithful. But we need to grab onto it first because we need to actually believe that for ourselves. That you can actually testify, I know that my God comforts no matter what. And you, my friend, are not alone. Secondly, he's the God who leads me. We know that famous Psalm 23, verses 1 to 4. It starts out, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not lack anything, some translations say. Some others say, I have all I need because God is my shepherd. The job of a shepherd is to lead and to guide, to protect and to nurture the sheep. He carries with him a rod and a staff. That rod is used for discipline when the sheep needs it. It's also used when, at the end of the day, when the shepherd calls them back to the sheepfold, he puts the rod down so that every time a sheep goes through, he counts them to make sure that they're all there. He doesn't want to leave any behind overnight. He knows the danger. The staff is used with the crook on it to help the sheep when they find themselves in trouble or to guide and to lead. That's the comfort signal to the sheep. They know that when the shepherd has the staff in his hand that they're comforted. And they know the shepherd's voice, don't they? I watched a YouTube video. You could probably still find it on there, but there was a, in, I think it was New Zealand, there was a YouTube video where the, there was a, a shepherd, 100 or so sheep in the field, and he had people come and try to call the sheep for feeding to see if they would come. It was just an experiment. And the sheep didn't come for anyone except the shepherd when he ended up calling. It was kind of a neat thing to see. When we allow our shepherd, Jehovah Rohi, to take his role as our shepherd in life, it helps us to be able to stop fighting so much. Stop fighting for the, the strain of circumstance, trying to get past circumstance, trying to find the answer. When we let Jehovah Rohi take his, his role as shepherd, that's letting Jesus lead us. When we allow him to lead us, we are guided the right way and we avoid consequences maybe that we didn't have to take. I'm sure all of us can say we've ended up in trouble sometimes because we didn't stop to think about what we were doing first. We didn't stop to consult our shepherd. And we ended up having to go through consequences maybe that could have been avoided. Am I the only one? I think we can all say we've been there at some point. When we allow him to provide for us, it increases our ability to trust the shepherd that he will give us what we need. The rest of that psalm talks about being led to green pastures beside quiet waters, restores our soul, leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We're going through a season in our world where financially people are strapped. The cost of living is going up. Jobs are increasingly difficult to get or even keep. We're in a day when we need to trust our shepherd. Trust that he sees us and will be our provider. In that, he is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. This is a season in history that we're going to need to have guidance and wisdom on what to do. Making moral or godly decisions in the days ahead could be costly. It could be costly. 
And so we need our shepherd to bring us safely into that fold at the end of the day. We know that he's going to back us up. We know that he is there to lead us and guide us to make the right decisions. Thirdly, he's the God who protects me. Psalm 61.3, For you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. My enemies cannot reach me. He's a rock and a fortress. What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. The times I get fearful concerning the things that are happening today, I will trust in you. The times that I don't know what I'm going to do and it makes me a little nervous or fearful, I will trust in you. The times when there's more month than there is money, I will trust in you. The times when relationships are difficult, I will trust in you. There are very few things in life that we can say that we actually are able to control. And that's what makes it a little frightening sometimes. Situations happen, pandemics happen, world tragedy happens, and we have no say in what happens or when it happens. But we do have a choice as to whether we allow those things to overtake us, don't we? We do have a choice to say that we will not be fearful. We do have a choice to hide in the cleft of the rock who is higher than I. Christ Jesus, who will be our fortress and our strength. The rock that it talks about, it represents covering, a hiding place, a sanctuary, a stronghold. I can imagine David hiding in the cleft of the rocks when he was hiding from Saul. That was his sanctuary, his place of safety. And scripture tells us that Jesus is our rock, our fortress and our strength. And we can hide in him. This is an area that I've personally had to encounter several times throughout my life. Things I couldn't control, things I never expected, things I hoped I would never have to face, and yet I had to face them and walk through them. And yet in those moments, I had a choice to make. Faith in my God over fear. Trust in God's abilities over mine. Trust in his ability to protect me rather than me trying to find that place of shelter that I could run for myself. Learning what God could do rather than what I couldn't do. Was it easy? <laughs> no way. It was not easy. But those were strengthening moments. And sometimes, you know, we wonder why, 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 God, would you let me go through this? Why does this have to happen to me? We hear that a lot. We go through stuff in our life and we say, why, God, does this have to happen to me? even though I've been faithful. We wonder sometimes. But God allows things to strengthen us. God allows things so that we will learn perseverance. We, he allows things so that we will learn to stand up under trial. And I think there could be a day coming when we're going to be thankful for those times that he taught us that. Do I hear an Amen. We're going to be thankful that, God, you taught me how to persevere under trial. And then fourthly, he's the God who defends me. Proverbs 23, verses 10 to 11. It says this, don't cheat your neighbor by moving the ancient boundary marker. Don't take the land of defenseless orphans. For their Redeemer is strong. He himself will bring their charges against them. The ancient boundary stone, that, would, uh, that was a, a way of marking out where property lines were. And so it's referring to someone here that would take an ancient boundary stone, that marker, 
and they would move it to try and steal a few feet or steal you know, a, a certain amount of their land. And God says, don't move an ancient boundary stone because they have a redeemer. They have a God who will defend them. The idea here is stealing, taking from someone who has no recourse for their own defense. The Lord will take up the case and defend those who have been stolen from. And, you know, people take in different ways. It doesn't have to be property. People can take from others physically, emotionally. They can take trust. They can take reputation. There's a lot of ways that people can take from others. And so when we allow God to be our defender, he will come to our defense. Sometimes we get into trouble because we think we have to defend ourselves. We rush to get back what was taken or prove that we're not who they say we are. And we have to defend ourselves. But this can happen in the spiritual realm as well. The enemy knows how to pull strings. We figured that one out. The enemy knows how to pull strings. And he will try to bring you down any way he can. But God is our defender. And that's where we need to trust his word that says the battle is the Lord's. And the battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's in the spiritual realm. Isaiah 19.20 When the people cry to the Lord for help against those who oppress them, he will send a Savior who will rescue them. People who oppress. The oppressors are those who continue to keep you down. Those who won't give you a chance to rise up from the ashes. Those who continue to spread unfounded gossip. Those who continue to make life difficult when they have the ability to help instead. Those who use their power against you, whether that's the power of words, the power of finances, the power of your health and well-being. Those are people that oppress. But even in that, God is our defender. We just have to give him the chance to show himself faithful in all our circumstances. There are moments that I just don't understand. Moments that I ask why. Moments that I feel like I'm hanging by a thread over a raging tsunami underneath me. But one thing I know God tells us, my son, my daughter, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. Every one of us has a story. It may be a story that is steeped in depression, fear, rejection, abuse, trust issues, lack of direction, financial issues, personal weakness, may be the victim of emotional theft or oppression. But you know, God can be the one who writes the next chapter in your story. He can offer you his faithfulness. He can offer you his love and affection. He can offer you his strength, his defense, his protection, his leading. And that goes for whatever you find yourself dealing with. The day in which we're living now has put a lot of pressure on people, and people are tired. They're looking for a sense of normality somewhere. And perhaps you can identify with something you've heard this morning. Maybe you just need reassurance in some area of your life that God is still there. He is your absolute everything. When Jesus was asked who he was, he said, I am. And that I am is, I am the bread of life. He's our sustenance. I am the light of the world. He gives guidance. I am the door of the sheep. He offers protection. 
I am the resurrection and the life. He gives us hope. I am the good shepherd. He cares for us. I am the way, the truth, and the life, the source of all. And I am the true vine. I am the life giver that enables us to bear fruit. I am. We can invite the I am into whatever circumstance you face. The I am can be your healer. The I am can be your deliverer. The I am wants to be your protection. The I am wants to be your emotional strength and stability. Invite the I am into your situation. And if that is you this morning, I, I, I want to invite you this morning to allow me to pray with you because scripture tells us that the power of prayer can be found in the agreement of two. But what I want to take what I want you to take away with you this morning is that he is the God who sees you. He is the God who leads you. He is the God who protects you and he is the God who defends you. And he will be the lifter of your head this morning. His love is everlasting, and there's no place that we can hide from his love. Do you need a touch of the master's love this morning? Do you need to know in some way the reality of who he is in your life and in your circumstances? He wants to offer that to you this morning. Would you stand with me? We're going to pray. We have a... A closing song, and if, if you would like the prayer of agreement this morning in whatever situation you face, I just offer you, you can come forward and I will pray with you. And feel free to come forward even as we're singing the last song. But Father, thank you that we have the ability to have the I am in our circumstances. God, we just lift up whatever we are facing this morning. No matter how small or great, you are able. You are the healer, the deliverer, the rock on which we stand. You are the one we can put our trust in. You are our fortress and hiding place. And so, God, we just want to hide in everything of who you are this morning. And so, Jesus, I just pray that you would be with each and every person here this morning and that you would whisper into their ears and their hearts how much you love them, how much you are desiring to be there in every circumstance of life to help them, to guide them, to care for them. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless each one as they go this week and that, Lord, there would be divine opportunities that you would set in front of us that we would be able to minister the gospel, to be able to tell other people who you are in their circumstance. And so we just thank you, God, for the opportunity to serve with you in your kingdom, in your harvest field. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you want prayer, feel free to come forward as we sing.